We are live on tonight's episode of Traditional Homemaker Live Q&A. We are going to address everyday minimalism featuring Rachel Jones from Nourishing and Minimalism. One of the topics that continue to trend on YouTube and in the print media is decluttering and minimalism. Last week, we kicked off our guest segments with Darcy of Organized by Darcy and Khadija of Her Healthy Home to get their thoughts on decluttering and minimalism. If you missed that show, I will link it in the description box below. It's not there yet, but I will get it in there. And we are continuing our guest segments by welcoming Rachel Jones from Nourishing the Minimalism um, YouTube to the show tonight. But before we get bring her on, if we're just meeting, I am Denise Jordan and I am your host. And tonight's sponsor of tonight's episode is Apron Diva. And Apron Diva, we believe that pretty and practical, an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. So please be sure to check out our new line here at the Apron Diva. Okay. All right, homemakers and friends, let's welcome Rachel Jones from the Nourishing from Nourishing Minimalism to the show. So Rachel, we tend to know most people's first names here in the show because the people kind of visit often. So ladies and gents, if we have any, any gents on with us tonight, say a big hello to Rachel. And even though this is not the sister circle, if you guys can find a red circle, throw out a, a red circle out there so that we can welcome her to the sisterhood here on the Traditional Homemakers Live Q&A. Thank you so much, Denise. Oh, you are quite welcome. It is just so nice to have you with us. We had Khadija and Darcy on last week, and there was just so much energy on the show. It was so much fun. So I was really looking forward to having you here with us tonight. So now, ladies, let me just share with you a little bit about Rachel. Now, Rachel, Sometimes I can be a little tech challenged. So if I don't talk myself through the steps on sharing the screen, I mess it up. So I'm going to share the screen real quick and share it. And share it and share it. And we are going to look at your channel. I just wanted them to see your channel right there, Nourishing Minimalism with Rachel Jones. And the one thing that I want you you guys to notice is to look at the titles that she has to share with us. Three steps to take when decluttering sentimental items. Should we declutter just in case items? The clutter, depression, anxiety cycle, how to stop it. Everyday minimalism, seven ways to practice daily minimalism, and then the fantasy stuff. This one is quite interesting. The fantasy stuff items I had to declutter to get freedom, and then the best questions to ask for decluttering my aha moments. We're going to address a little bit of all of this, but look at that thumbnail. I have to tell you, I had to check that out because I was like, why is there a pile of poop? <laughs> thumbnail. So, Needless to say, she has a quite interesting sense of humor. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's do a little bit of a greeting, see what the ladies are saying to you, and then I'm going to get started with the Q&A. So let me just hang on to see. So there's Michelle at My Everyday Wife Life, and I asked her to help me stay on track to make sure we stayed on, you know, on an hour. And then um, this is Miss Congeniality. She's always here with us. So Miss C, you're going to love her. She's probably not one of the what you call dainty YouTubers, but she is certainly a strong minimalist and declutterer, a strong homemaker. You are going to love her. Who calls me a dainty YouTuber? <laughs> That's nice. 
And then there's Khadija at her healthy home. And then Darcy, they were both on live last week. Christian McCullough, hey, Christy, you're going to love Rachel. And then Matriarchs Matter, hey, Nefertari, good to have you with us tonight as well. Mary, you're going to love Rachel. And then Sue Bentley, I just missed her, I think. So people are greeting you. They're saying, hi, Rachel. Yeah. Hi, Rachel. Um, oh, uh, Yolanda said she got the men's apron for her husband's birthday and he loves it. Well, that's great. And then uh, Christy says she already loves you. So that's pretty good. And she's saying hello, Rachel. And the Beachy Farmhouse is saying hello to us all. And she's getting ready for Christmas in July, I see. And um, Rachel, this must be one of your people because she says uh, it's Connie McClanahan and she's this is the first time she's seen you live. So it looks like we might have a few of your people that have joined us. Yeah. And let's see. She says Rachel is great. And she, Christy says the fantasy self video helped her a lot. That fantasy self video. We were talking about that at the beauty shop today. <laughs> oh, good. And uh Michelle said she liked the poop video. <laughs> and then, hey, Dee, good to have you with us. So, hey, everybody, I'm glad you guys are here. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. So the one of the first questions I want to ask you, Rachel, is how do you define clutter? I think of clutter as everything that gets in our way. I have, so I used to just have so much. I would, and I'd walk into the house and I just have something and I think like, oh, where should I put this? Well, I don't have a place to put this. So I'll just, I'll just set it right here. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what it is. It's just because there was so much clutter in my cupboards. I didn't have any place to put things away that I actually needed. And so then everything just felt like clutter because everything was just right in front of me. Okay. Okay. I get that. So now in one of your videos, you talked about a book you read called Life in the 21st Century, and it identified clutter as a problem in the book. And it sounds like there's some actual science behind that. Can you talk about that a little? Yeah. So they, they studied, I think it was 12 different families and, um, and they found that women's cortisol levels increased like by the evening when their home was filled with stuff. So when they compared homes, the ones that had so much stuff in their home, like cluttery homes, um, they had more of that stress hormone. And so um, I found that myself. I was very overwhelmed and stressed out with the amount of stuff that I had. Okay. Okay. That makes perfect sense. All right. So in another one of your videos, you said getting rid of clutter is an emotional piece. It's emotional work. So let's talk about that because I can definitely relate to that. I was working on a decluttering video first thing this morning and I was looking at, well, I have nine sets of plates in my everyday kitchen cabinet, nine sets in my everyday cabinet. That's not the China cabinet where I keep my good stuff. And so Darcy and I, organized by Darcy, have been talking about we need to get rid of some stuff. You know, we've been housekeeping for more than 40 years. We don't need to bring anything else in. We need to get some stuff out. So my thought was, OK, I'm going to go down to five sets of dishes instead of nine. And I stood there looking in that cabinet and Rachel, even thinking about it, I am having a visceral reaction. My heart is starting to race. I could just like feel, oh, how can I get rid of some of my plates? And I tell you what, it, it was a challenge. So talk about that, about clutter being an emotional reaction. Yeah, well, everything. Well, there's not, not all clutter is. Like, I mean, we could get rid of some things. We can get rid of our toothbrushes. Like we don't yeah. feel an attachment to them. But so many things in our home, we have something either... We have emotions about spending money on it um, and or um, if someone gave it to us and, you know, gifts are a big one. Um, guilty clutter. Gu guilty clutter. Um, 
gosh, like everything, when we, when we pick it up, we do have those emotions and we have to work through those emotions. We have to feel, feel all those things and talk ourselves through them. Like we be our own therapist (laughs) and, and, and acknowledge that, you know what, I, I don't need nine sets of dishes. Like I, um, like we can't even possibly use that much. Like unless you're unless you're into tablescapes and you're like constantly changing them out, um, it's not likely that we'll have enough people over at our house to use that many dishes at one time. No, and you know, I, I had to think about it because I kept thinking, well, if I get rid of these white plates, well, I use those sometimes when I do my YouTube videos. If I'm doing a plate of food and I want to... Uh, um, a plain background. Then I thought, well, the red ones with the little bevel on the end, well, I use those when I'm having spaghetti or something that's runny and I but and I don't want a bowl, but I want a plate. Well, these work for that. Well, then I use these because of this and I use these because of that. When I thought about it, at least seven of the nine sets of plates in there, I touch at least once every two weeks. So I thought, okay, you're moving. I'm, I'm not. But I told myself, yeah. moving and you don't want to take all this stuff with you. You can only take five sets of plates, you know. So I did get four sets out of the cabinet. Wow. I one set in the quarantine box. I put the other set in the Goodwill box. And my husband put that in the trunk of a car. And I've already given that away. To tell you, to tell you the truth, when I went to the beauty shop, that one set that was in the trunk of the car, I was telling my stylist about it. And and um, she wanted some of the coffee mugs. And she looked at those plates and she said, you know, those are pretty nice plates. She said, I might know someone that can use those because, you know, she knows a lot of members of her church and different people like that that can use things. So she took those off my hands. So I was able to share those, but I had a visceral reaction. Yeah. So one thing I'd like to bring up is that it's okay to separate sets of things. And I know that goes against like everything, like, oh my gosh, I, I can't do that. But if you have like a certain plate that you use, but all you use are the plates from that set, mm-hmm. then go ahead and keep the plates and let go of the other things. I When I was going through stuff, I had bought sets of white dishes and um, and so I had 16 coffee cups. And aside, like those were just the white coffee cups. Then I had the, you know, the character coffee cups and all the other gift ones too. But I had these 16 coffee cups and it was like, well, maybe we'll have brunch and all these people will drink coffee. But no one ever came over to drink coffee. Like, and if they did, it was like one or two people. It was, um, you know, we never had a huge gathering for breakfast. And um And so I was saving it for, it kind of ties into the fantasy, Mm -hmm. fantasy self where I think like, oh, well, I'll just have these big brunch meals with all of my friends and I'll, I'll do all this cooking. And like, that's not my reality. I, I really, um, although I, I enjoy entertaining, Mm -hmm. I just, I'm not going to have 20 adults over at the same time for brunch. So yeah being real realistic and um and we do get we have some kind of attachment to our our clutter like the um, the emotional attachment and sometimes it's fear where we're we're having to acknowledge that i'm afraid of of being without or lacking in some way and so i don't want to get rid of those things because i'm afraid i'll be uncomfortable mm-hmm. um, and and we kind of have to just feel the fear and do it anyway, because it makes our life easier when we don't have all the things in the cupboard, especially if we can make room in the cupboard for the things that we tend to leave out on the counters because our cupboards are full. So if we get rid of the things that are taking up space, then we can put the useful things in the cupboards and it makes it easier to clean up. Boom. Is that an aha moment or not, ladies? If that's an aha moment for you, throw me an aha in the uh, chat box. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I don't think I like you very well. You're not my. (sighs) I'm being like my little niece, Zarya, today. (sighs) (laughs) Dramatic. So, okay. It makes sense, though, because I have to tell you, I do have a few things that's on the table in the dining room that I don't have room to put 
in the cabinet. At least I didn't have room to put in the cabinet. But now that I have taken some of those things out, I was thinking, oh, so now that these are out, I can bring in these things that really don't have a home. And I felt, oh, you know, so so I did feel better about that. I, I really did. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you this then, because I was telling you just how I felt a visceral reaction to mm -hmm decluttering does clutter itself affect our mental health absolutely i um i think i think most people with depression and anxiety will say that it it affects them uh, it just causes like well um you know we have we have all these things sitting around and they remind us like like they talk to us our clutter talks to us and some of it is like you need to like papers that say you need to deal with me you need to file me you know there's things on the shelf like you need to dust me you need to organize me you need to you know put me away rearrange me and and it just I, to me, it felt like it was screaming at me all the time. Like everywhere I looked, everything was yelling at me. And, um, and it just made me feel so inadequate mm -hmm. and, um, and reminded me of just what a bad homemaker I was, right? Honestly. Mm -hmm. And so like even just sitting down and reading with my kids, I wouldn't be present. I wouldn't be there enjoying this time with my kids. I'd be thinking like, well, I need to dust that. I still need to sweep. Like, why are you such a slob? Like I was very oh. hard on myself. So, um, so having that especially when you're struggling already with your emotions, with any kind of anxiety or depression, it just adds, adds to all of it. And then, and then of course you feel like you, you don't have the energy or motivation to do anything about it. So it just, it just cycles. Yeah, it does. And I know if I get like in here in my office, if I get too decluttered on the desk, too much stuff piles up. And especially if, I, if I'm in a role and I'm really busy a lot and I'll just put stuff on top of it and kind of get working at whatever the project is. And then the next project, just put it on top. I'll get to a point that I'm just like, oh, I have to clean it all up before I can do anything because then I'm paralyzed by all the clutter and all the disarray because I can just see it all around me. And I was thinking about one of the things that you have mentioned in one of your videos, and I don't know which one it was because I've seen so many of them, but you were talking about visual clutter and the amount of stuff that people have in their homes. So, and I sit here and I look in my office and I, just kind of look around and think about all of that. So tell us about visual clutter and what that is while I silence this phone. Yeah. So that came up in the um, in that book, Life in the 21st Century. Um, and they talked about like in an average home, there is over 2000 items like vis visible in in each room and and it doesn't take much i mean like if you look behind me like i have jars and books and you know <laughs> bowl and tape so like even even in my home that like i feel is pretty minimal there's still stuff that we can see so mm -hmm. the more we add to it the more um like the visual clutter like where it just bombards us mm -hmm. um and especially for people with sensory issues mm -hmm. um now there's like i know there's different different ones so some people like that comforts them but mm -hmm. for many of us it's uh, it causes more more anxiety like just seeing all the things um things with with words too can just it just adds more more input on our mind when we really just need to be calm and like enjoy our space yeah yeah I, I in one of your videos you said that it causes can cause guilt and embarrassment particularly if people drop in yes yes i um i have one of my big motivations for embracing minimalism is we were we were remodeling our house and uh, and we had a nice older couple from church helping us uh and they were they were older, like their kids were out of the house. And, but I'm pretty sure she was one of those people that just always had her house under control anyway, like no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so he was putting in a sink and he's like, okay, I'll stop by sometime this week and, and put that part in. And that was just horrifying to me. Like the, oh gosh, that's like the worst thing anybody could ever say that they're going to just come by sometime. Mm -hmm. So I worked like all day Monday. I just like 
worked so hard. I was, I was pregnant with our fifth baby. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I had four little ones and, and, um, like just running after them, cleaning up all the toys, trying to stay up on top of the laundry, like all the things and trying to hide it away. So it was like not visible and it was completely exhausting. Um, but he didn't show up. And (laughs) so Tuesday I'm like, okay, like I can keep up with this. It's okay. I can do it. And I just worked like, and I just felt just completely exhausted by the end of the day. Still, he didn't show up. And same Wednesday, Thursday, like, and Friday came and I was so done. I was just, I was absolutely done. I was completely exhausted. There was laundry on the couch. There was toys across the living room. Like, of course. There's, yeah, there's breakfast dishes still on the table. And I'm sitting on the couch going like, oh my gosh, there's so much to do. And I was like, knock, knock, knock. And I, I was just horrified. I'm like, okay, now he's going to walk through the house. And I got up, I answered the door. He walked in and I saw him glance around because people do like, we can't even help it. And, um, and he walked in, he put the part in and he left and it was like five minutes but I so wanted to say, like, I tried all week. Like, I worked really hard to make this clean. This It doesn't look like this all the time. And then I'm like, well, yeah, it kind of does. But <laughs> um, that was that was one of the, the moments where, I, like, I, I never want to do that again. I never want to face that again because it's just um, – that's hard. And it, it's embarrassing. And um, And I always felt that when neighbors would stop by, I'd be like – like just stand at the doorway and pretend to just talk because like, oh, this is completely normal just to talk in the doorway because I really was embarrassed of my home. And now if people stop in, like we're a normal family. I have, I, I have six kids. We have three that have moved out now. They're adults and then three at home. And there's stuff out like they they play like right now we have a puzzle sitting in the dining room because they're working on a puzzle and we have things out so it looks lived in but it's not embarrassing I can open my door and I can have people come in and it looks like normal everyday life and it doesn't look horrible so I get that and I think probably all of us have had a, a time or two when someone has dropped in and our house was a total disaster and it was like, why today? You know, we've all had those moments and wish we didn't. Yeah. Um, I want to back up just for a second because I just happened to notice a comment in the comment section and it was from um, Khadija at her healthy home. And I'm just going to pop it up there for a second. And she was talking about, she thought that she believes each person in the home to be able to collect one thing that they enjoy. And she likes books and wanted a bookshelf in every room, but we're okay with two, I think. And she does read them. So, and and I have to agree, well, I'll leave it there for a second. I have to agree with Khadija to a certain extent because people by nature are collectors but we probably have to keep it under control. And one of the things that I learned, I think it was from Dana at A Slob Comes Clean. I think that's her channel. When she says she looks at the cabinet, the bookshelf, whatever space it is that she chooses to put those items in as the structure or the, or the space right. those things can Yeah. And they have to be able to fit there. And if they don't fit in there, then it's too many and they have to go. And that particular sentiment has really helped me like work on my coffee mugs because I decided, okay, this area here in the kitchen cabinet is where the coffee mugs go. And I had like two shelves and there were some shelves behind them. But I thought if they don't fit in this space, then they have to go. And if one comes in, then another one has to go out. And that one was kind of helpful to me, too. But as most of the people here know, I am not a minimalist. I like my stuff. I like pretty plates. I like pretty glasses. But I really like pretty dishes. And, you know, we all take something from our childhood, regardless of what it is. And I've shared this before. But now my mom would say something different. And my sisters, if any of them are on, might say something different. But what I remember when we were kids was that all our plates 
didn't match. And they were that Mel Mac, which of course I realized mm -hmm. now was the thing in the 60s and the 50s were Mel Mac plates with the little flowers on them and whatever. And every now and then we would drink out of jelly jars or whatever and, I, and the flat word didn't match. And I thought when I grow up, all our plates are going to match. I'm going to have pretty plates and all my flat words going to match. And when I got married, that's exactly what I did. And I love pretty plates. I like to set a pretty table. Now, my husband could care less if the flat word had match. He doesn't even notice. But he has learned to set the table the way I prefer it to be set. But it's like I realize now that I'm doing all that for me and I'm bringing baggage from like back, you know, from when I was a kid to today when it really doesn't matter. And guess what one of the trends is right now in glassware? Mason jars. Yep. So go figure. <laughs> Yep. I've used the container method too. I have, I, I like pens. So I'm a, I'm a planner girl and I like the highlighters and the different colored pens and <laughs> there it is. And so I have my desk drawer and I have my little like dividers in there and, um, and I keep them maintained. Like it's contained to just that, like really I have to, I have to have my limits and that helps it get it out of keeps it keep it under control i mean i can't use up that many pens anyway because they're, they're just going to dry out so it helps and it helps to not go shopping all the time yeah, yeah i've learned that that it helps not to keep bringing things in and that's one of the things that me and darcy were was talking about it's like we don't need to bring anything else in here because the stuff that we have we have to figure out what to do with it. And like I said earlier, our families don't want it. Okay, let me ask you one other thing then that I saw on um, in, in, in one of your videos, you said that organizing is not simplifying. Tell me about that. And I'm going to put that down here in the chat too. Yeah, so I when I was wanting to declutter and I would go to Pinterest and I'm like, okay, let's go for some decluttering ideas. And it was all um, organizing stuff. Like here's how you box things up cute and label them and all these ideas for organizing them. And, and I thought like, no, like, I don't want to just organize things like I, I struggled maintaining a house. I struggled keeping a house clean mm -hmm. and, um, and just because there was too much stuff. So I needed to de-own it. Joshua Becker had said that once. And I love that phrase of oh. don't, don't just declutter it, de-own it. And it needs to be out of the house. I mean, it makes a difference because if we just shove things in the garage or in the basement or anywhere, it's still there and it's in and it's in our mind where we we have to manage this inventory because it's always there. Mm -hmm. And so to really simplify and and have that freedom that comes with it, mm -hmm. you have to completely get it out of the house. And you can't you can't organize all the stuff mm -hmm. in a way that that makes it feel calm and and easy because there's still so much stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can tell you, I can relate to that because like I've got a lot of really neatly organized things in my home, but I probably still have way too many things. And even just today, like I said, I was working on a video on decluttering and my husband was looking on. I was asking him a couple of questions about a couple of things and I pulled out a beer mug. And I said, well, honey, what about this? You know, do you use this one? Because I'm thinking, okay, I haven't seen you use this one in a while. We can put it in the decolor box. And he was like, oh, he said, I, I didn't know where it was. I wasn't able to find it. And I realized that it was at the very back of the cabinet. I had other glasses in front of it. So out of sight, out of mind. And with my husband, I don't know about yours, but with my husband, if it's not right out there in front and is shouting, here I am, he doesn't see it. Yeah. So he missed using it because he couldn't see it. And so I realized that, you know, I just had too many glasses in there. And then so I so when I thought about that while we were standing there and I says, well, you know, when our son in law was here, he always reaches to the very top shelf and gets down one of my good glasses, the ones with like the silver trim that I have to hand wash and they can't go in the dishwasher. And I've got like two rows of everyday glasses in front of them. I wonder why he reaches up there. 
Now he's tall like my husband. My husband says, well, probably because he has to reach behind something to get these. And up there, he can just grab one. And I was like, oh, I mean, so I was like, oh, okay. So whereas to me, I could just move something aside and grab the glass that I want, you know, for the guys when they look in there, they're just going to grab the one that yeah. closest at hand. So I could never figure out why is he bypassing all of these everyday glasses? So yeah. I think of, um, I think of ease of use as one of my determining factors um, because it's easy to collect things, especially if we're going for like kitchen appliances. And, um, and for me, I hated the crock pot. So like, I, I know, I know. Um, I don't like, I don't like any of it. I didn't like taking it out. I didn't like the food that came out of it. I hated cleaning it. So I, another embarrassing story I, I made, um, we had a Thanksgiving dinner and I thought I should make stock from the turkey bones. And so I put it in this big crock pot and then I cooked it for a day and I didn't want to deal with it. So I stuck it in the garage fridge and I forgot about it. And, oh. and it was okay. This is really embarrassing. It was two years later and I just threw it away. <laughs> I like, I put it in a bag and I had my husband carry it out and put it in the dumpster. And, <laughs> um, and I was like, I'm not getting a crock pot again. Like that's, <laughs> um, that's <for> hilarious. Me, <laughs> it wasn't easy to use. Like it was, it was bulky. It was cumbersome. It was hard to wash. And at that point I didn't have a dishwasher. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can put them in the dishwasher, <laughs> but okay. So I just, I don't know. I just hated it so much. And so if it's something that is easy for me to set up, use and take down and clean and put away again, mm -hmm. then I will keep it. If that process is, is cumbersome, if it's difficult, then it's just not worth, like it's not saving me any time because it's taking up more mental energy of like, oh, I still have to take care of that. I get it. I, I totally get that. We have a uh, extra large Ninja foodie grill and uh, we just stuck. Well, my husband's been using it ever since we got it because I got it for him as a gift, but I've not used it myself. I've used it with him standing by giving me guidance, but he loves it. But I'm just like, it's something else I have to work at learning how to use, which, you know, I, I've just cooked a couple things on it. But it's just so much easier to cook with my regular cookware or my instant pot or my crock pot, which I love. But that grill thing, I don't know. I just feel like it's a little bit too much. And, but it's something that I need to learn how to use because I want to be able to do video using it as well. So and it makes wonderful steaks. So I'm like, OK, I really need to learn how to how to do that. OK, so now I'm just going to say right now to everybody in the chat. If any of this has been a shock to your system, leave me a note in the comment section. If you're here on the replay or throw me a note in the chat, what's been your aha moment so far? And then I'm going to go back and just look real quick to see what some of the chats been because they have been chatting it up <laughs> in here. So let's see what they've been talking about. Uh, so, Susan, Susan said the crock pot truth comes out. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So Susan said she started decluttering 14 days ago. She's done one, four hours, 10 of those days, one to four hours, 10 of those days. Wow. But she's thanking you for inspiring her for that. Now, chaos syndrome. What is that? Uh, Nefertiri CH. Oh, so that's a oh, fly lady. Can't grab anybody over. Yep. Yeah, can't have anyone over syndrome. Yeah, that's fly lady. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, that crock pot thing, that is hilarious. <laughs> Penny says she doesn't like for people to come by and have a messy kitchen. Oh, oh yes, no. everyone, please hit the like button. So Christy says she started her journey because of intense embarrassment. She collected so much stuff that her house, basement, garage, woodworking room, and garage loft were completely full and she was mortified. You know, me and the ladies at the beauty shop were talking about that. It's like we have so much stuff. And then some people even have 
places to store additional stuff like store sheds or they rent a storage unit off property yeah. to store more stuff. Typically, at least in your storage shed is probably lawn equipment, stuff that you use seasonally that you can't keep in the house or the garage because your car is in the garage. So not, like, not in my storage, not in my garage. I never had my car parked in my garage. Really? <laughs> it was full of stuff. Yeah. Well, mine was, is full of stuff now. Well, not quite now because I'm kind of getting that process finished up. But one of the things we were doing, we were cleaning stuff in the house. So I would move it to the garage and I would plan to get to it later mm -hmm. and then never got to it. Well, then where some places in the house were nice and neat, the garage quickly became a hot mess. So I've been working on that. So my great garage cleanup video dropped yesterday because I've you know kind of got that under control. But OK, mm -hmm. well, let's see. Uh so uh, table for nine, and I'm thinking table for nine, is your name Amy? You're going to have to tell me again because I'm forgetting. But she says any house with toddlers gets a free pass. And uh, Nefertiri, not Nefertiri, Khadija has two toddlers. Let's see. And then Susan says she's a terrified to miss a day probably of decluttering and cleaning because she's afraid she won't get it all done. One of the things that you talk about, and I'm bringing this up a little early, um, but I'm going to go ahead and throw it in here since this is just a perfect segue, is about routines and how routines can be so important. Let's talk about that because Susan said she's afraid to miss a day because she's afraid she won't ever get it all done. First of all, if you're managing a home, it's never all done. A woman's work, I should say a homemaker's work is never done. There's always something to do. But let's help the audience out here when, they, when they're afraid of missing a day because they won't get things all, ever done. Let's talk about how routine is helpful. So I didn't have any routines in place. I didn't know how to maintain a home. I like knew how to deep clean, um, but I didn't know how to keep it clean. And... Um, and one of my one of my best friends, uh, she's one of those that like was born organized. Like everything is always nice, and she's got it under control. She's got, mm -hmm. you know, she's got her three kids. They always you have their homework done. And, like, like the fly lady cat. I, <laughs> yeah, um, I have heard that from fly lady. So um, she ended up turning into a personal organizer. Like that was her thing, <laughs> and. Um, and she would come over to my house and fold laundry before she sat down because I had a laundry couch and that's that's just where it stayed. But I was at her house and um and I, like annoyed because like her house is always under control. Like why is her house always under control and mine is never? And uh and so we had lunch and we were talking and she got up and she took her plates and washed everything up, put them in the dishwasher, cleaned up the food. And we talked the whole time. And then we went and sat down in the living room and talked some more. And I realized that she didn't even notice that she was doing this. Like she it's just, it's routine for her. Whereas I looked at all of that cleanup, doing the dishes, putting food away as this task that I had to do. Like, oh, I've got to set aside time to do this job now. Mm -hmm. And um, and she just did it without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So that's the benefit of routines. When we get them established and into our lives, then it doesn't feel like a huge task. We just, we do it without thinking. It's just it's so routine, just like we brush our teeth. Like we we don't think about this is this are the things that I have to do to get ready for the bed. We just we just do it. Um, and so I I had to depend on that to have that was the first thing I focused on. And then when we do that, when we have a clean sink, we have a clean counter, and we have a clean table, mm -hmm. then we like those clean spaces and it motivates us to do more. Like, oh, well, like this didn't take that long. It Really, it takes less than 10 minutes to clean up after dinner. So like I could just take care of this pile of papers on the counter because like then the whole counter will be clean and it kind of it spreads. Yes. Okay. All right. So then I've made the decision uh, to start decluttering my home. I'm going to be downsizing or moving or, or whatever. 
where's the best place to start? Should I start in my kitchen or should I start in a closet? I like starting in the kitchen partly because there's a lot of utilitarian items in the kitchen. So it's it's easier to make a decision like, well, which pizza cutter do I like better? Well, I definitely like this one better so I can get rid of that one. And, um, and there's not as much sentimental items, though your dishes might fall into the sentimental <laughs> items. But then when we streamline the kitchen and we have that where it's super easy to maintain, it's easy to use, then we can work on the other areas of our house without getting just bogged down with the kitchen tasks mm -hmm. because that's completely streamlined. And not only that, but the kitchen tasks are daily. I mean, like we're yeah. in the kitchen every single day because you've got to eat every day. Yeah. Well, and eat. if you have kids at home, like it's like feels like it's all the time. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. So um, one other thing that I was thinking about in that regard was when me and the hubby were looking in the dish cabinet while I was contemplating decluttering some of those sets of dishes, he asked me, he said, so, you know, we were looking at all the different sets. So he said, so what are you going to do when we have company and you need to, you know, we've got a big group of people here because when our kids come in from out of town, of course, we have more people here. Each of the ones that live out of town, when they come, they're a family of four. So then there's eight people here. And then, of course, my son and his family that lives here also comes over. So then we might have 12 people additional here in the house and that kind of thing or whatever. So he said, so what are you going to do? You're going to get plastic or paper plates because he knows how I like to get out my good plates and things like you're going to get out plastic or paper. So I'm thinking this is maybe like a just in case scenario. So talk about that. Just, <laughs> just in case. Yeah. So I would ask, like, how realistic is it that all of those people will be over? Like how often, like looking in the past couple of years, how often have you needed 12 12 dishes. 12 doesn't seem like a lot. I, I come from a family of 10. And so like my siblings, we're like 45, I think. So like, there's no way I'm going to have enough dishes for everybody. Um, so, so I gave up on that. But um, I would look realistically at what, what you've done in the past. Mm -hmm. And, and um, when you've had that many people, what do you actually use? And feel free to keep what you use. We don't have to suffer mm -hmm. with embracing minimalism. We just have to keep. Wait, 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 wait. What? Back up. What was that? <laughs> we don't have to suffer. Have to what? <laughs> no, minimalism is supposed to make our life easier. Not it's not um, it's not suffering. It's not we're not torturing ourselves. So um, when when I first started and I've, I've gotten rid of the plates since. Um, so I have, I have six kids and the three older ones have spouses, girlfriends. And, uh, so we have a lot of people, but we have eight big plates and eight little plates. So total, we can have 16 people eating on a plate. It's awkward to eat off of a little plate if you're, if you have a big appetite, mm -hmm. but it's completely doable. Mm -hmm. So I've never needed more than more than that. Um, and when when my my siblings and their families lived closer, I had an old set of Brian's grandma's that of the Corel dishes and she had like 20 or 30 uh -huh. just plates, just plates. And so I just kept them in an out of the way cupboard and the kids didn't know they were there. My husband didn't know they were there. So no one was tempted to use them up like in our everyday use. They were just sitting there when for when family came and visited and we wanted to pull out the plates. Then I didn't have to use paper plates. Oh, I like that idea. I, well, before COVID, you know, before COVID, our house was the house that people would come together. So I would, like every year, I would do a go red dinner because I'm a heart disease survivor. So I would have a go red dinner to celebrate heart health. And I would have about eight to 10 couples in and be a seated dinner. And we would do that. And then, um, or at Christmas time, you know, I'd have big family Christmas open house and, you know, I would get out my plates and, you know, I have some washable china, different things like that, that I would get out. I mean, I like plates. I'm not a plastic paper plate kind of person. However, when my, one of my sons graduated from college in May, 
I got out paper plates because it was our first gathering that we had had since the shutdown in March of 19 when all this mess started. And my sister was like, you got out paper plates? She's like, I can't believe it. But, you know, I'm older now. I'm more tired. You know, I get, I don't have as much energy. And I just thought, let's just make it easy. And it was so nice. I couldn't believe it. And then I have a niece who has a huge house and entertains probably about twice a year. Lots of people in. But when she does, she has the prettiest plastic plates, you know, that she gets. I don't know where she gets them from, but they're plastic. They're disposable. Mm -hmm. They're so pretty. They look like China, but they're disposable. And at the end of the night, you know, they pitch them all. So I have learned that there is an easier way. So now am I going to have 20 and 30 people in the house again? I mean, I don't know. You know, it's like when the kids were here for Jason's graduation, it was so nice to have a house full of people again. But whether or not we're going to be able to do that like regularly again, I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping that I can get people here at Christmas time because last Christmas, I had a melt time down three different times during the day because, you know, people couldn't travel. My kids were out of town. I was I'm not going to go there right now. But but, you know, I tend to I, I'm the one that likes to entertain, but I'm not entertaining as much. So one of the ladies at the beauty shop today, she was saying that, well, if you've got any of those luncheon sets, we could use some of those at the church. I said, oh, I'm sure I've got at least 20 of those. You know the ones I mean? Those little, I do. Place with the little punch cups yep. that every bride got when they got married, like in the 70s. and Yeah, my mom used to collect those. She had, she had a lot. Yeah, I got a lot of those. I said, well, I've got some of those, but they're in a box up, you know. So I'm thinking as I begin to downsize, you know, I've got lots of things that I can let go of and whether or not I'm going to be given bridal teas and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I think, okay. I think you bring up an important topic. So with that, like it was, it was enjoyable for you to have family over and not have to stress about cleanup afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to focus on that. Like what, what is our goal? And there are some people who take so much joy out of setting the table and, and that's fine. Like if that's your thing, then go ahead and embrace it because we all have our thing, right? Like the gal that had her books and I have my pens, like we all have our thing. And if that's your thing, then that's fine. But if your thing is really just to connect with people and to spend time with them, then make it easy on yourself instead of holding yourself to this standard of what well, has to look this way. And yeah. I have to serve, you know, all made from scratch food and like you know, have a whole like beautiful arrangement that I got out of my garden. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I, and I'm glad you said that because last, well, not last year, but before COVID, um, I had not been feeling well when it was time for me to do my go red dinner. And so my husband said, we're not doing it. And I was just like, babe, that's my celebration of life. He said, then we're just going to go to a restaurant. So I just invited six people to a restaurant and we did it there. And oh my God, it was so easy. I didn't have to clean up anything. It was like the waitresses brought everything. They cleared everything away. I still had the cake. I still had all the go red stuff. And I'm like, that might be the way to go from now on. Because like I said, you know, it does get harder, you know, the older you get to continue to do some of all that stuff. And like you said, it was the connection that I wanted more than, you know, setting everything out. Okay. Well, listen, I better kind of keep moving here because I'm starting to chatter. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about that video that Michelle said that she loves so much. And I thought it was hilarious. And this was the question that you asked was, do you like it enough to clean off of it? And let's make sure I got it spelled right here. Because <laughs> I was like, there you go. I was looking at the thumbnail. And I was like, is that poop? I mean, I was like, that's, that's that thumbnail? click, click bait, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> so I, when I first started, I would keep a lot of things. So, so when we first start, we do have this, um, it's easier to keep things than it is to get rid of things. So the 
the more more decisions are keep 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 and um and as we go through and peel off layers then we can get rid of more and more but when i first started i kept so much of that you know just in case i needed it and i kept it in the basement because our basement is still unfinished um it's we live in an old house it was built in 1882 the basement's like dug out and like um it has I don't know, kind of walls. And, but if you peek through there, it's just dirt. Like it's, it's really rough. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a livable space, but I could store things in there. And so I did, I put all the just in case stuff and, um, and we have one bathroom and it's upstairs and, um, and my, my son, my poor son, he still has, has issues, <laughs> digestion issues. Um, and one day I hear, mom we have a problem and i go running to the bathroom and it was it was really horrible um there like water all over the floor it wasn't just water on the floor it was there was there was stuff mixed in and I, so i splashed through and like I, I had to turn off the water at the base of the toilet you know get down right in the nitty gritty of it you even knew how to turn off the water is amazing because I don't think I know how to do that. Oh yeah, well I've replaced toilets in my time, so <laughs> there was that. And we threw towels down, but like it was it was too late. Like um, because the house is just it's just kind of pieced together. There's big holes, and like under the sink, there's a hole. It's probably like like that big, and um, and all the water just like ran right through the floor and it went like then it just spread out it was just like dripping all the way through on all these pipes and it was all over all that stuff that i had been saving just in case i needed it uh, so it ended up that the the pipe was full of of roots and if you if you look at my youtube video you'll see a picture of it it was horrible it was just packed full of roots it was an old ceramic pipe it had broken and the roots had just filled it so it was gonna happen mm -hmm. um and so like as i was going through all this debris now with just it was just covered with brown water it was so gross um and i did wear gloves <laughs> um and and that's when it hit me like asking the right questions because before i'd open up my cupboard and i would look at my coffee cups and i'd think well which ones do i want to get rid of which ones can i can i live without and that is really going from it from a, a scarcity mindset of like i'm going to be uncomfortable and this whole minimalism thing this is suffering mm -hmm. and um and that's not it at all. Like as I'm cleaning up all this junk in the basement, it's like, do I love it enough to clean poop off of it? No, there is nothing that I love enough to clean poop off of it. Like, because that was all the just in case stuff. It wasn't even the stuff that I used and enjoyed on a daily basis. It was just the things I was saving. And so I was able to get rid of like all of that, all of it just went into the dumpster because it was easy to make that decision. And so when we pull out everything and we look at it on the table in front of us, we can ask, well, which ones do we love? Which ones are the ones that we use? Which are the favorite coffee cups? And we can put those back up in the cupboard and then we can just get rid of everything that's left sitting on the counter because those aren't our favorites and they're, they're just not serving us. They're getting in our way. Exactly. I, I tell you, I had to laugh when I watch that video but it did make so much sense and there was a couple of times when i was decluttering and i said do i like this enough to clean poop off of and i'm like no and so it made it easy for me to dispose of it okay i just thought that was was just hilarious and i thought the uh, people here that were viewing would appreciate that <laughs> okay so now we're going to do the rapid fire q a so i'm going to just going to throw it at you it's either going to be a question or it's going to be a comment that I picked up from one of your videos and you just respond accordingly. Now, let me get this off of here, too. OK, so just real quick, Kristen said she lost formal dresses in a basement flood. It was a rainstorm. So, OK, so I'll tell you what, we all can probably tell a few stories like that. Yeah. I thought that one was hilarious. OK, here's something you said in one of your videos. Any step forward, no matter how small, is a step forward. 
Yes. And I, I stand by that. I think we are so we require, we require perfection of ourselves. Well, if I can't do it right or all the way, I'm just not going to do it. And if you just take little steps at a time, you will, you will move forward. Okay. The things we are not using can be a blessing in someone else's life. Yes, they can. Like there's so many stories when you ask people of decluttering um, and and it, even just going to the thrift store, if someone is in need and they go to the thrift store and they find the thing that they've been hoping for and it's in their price range, they can be very blessed by that. Okay. Okay. I agree with that too. How do I go about decluttering? Oh, no, no. Uh, commit to a morning and evening routine. Yes. We talked about the importance of routine. That's what, that's what motivates us getting some kind of action. Okay. And then how do I go about decluttering sentimental items? Oh, that's, that's on the speed round, Denise. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's way too much. Uh, well, I just put okay, out a video we'll on that. We'll but like, it, it's important to feel the feelings. Most sentimental items are, we have to process grief in some way because we're grieving a season we're out of or the loss of a relationship or the loss of a person or something. It's usually usually something like that. So when I think of sentimental items, I think of like letting go of the kids' clothes and, and we have to acknowledge that we're not in that season anymore. And that's hard and it's sad, but it's okay because the next season with our children is something precious as well. Yeah. I just finally took an easy bake oven to the Goodwill. My husband wouldn't touch the box. He said, you're going to put it in the Goodwill box. So there's a couple of times he tried to dispose of it and I wouldn't let him. But I thought Jill doesn't want it. Her daughter didn't play with it. And then my our two littlest granddaughters, they didn't play with it. And I'm like, who am I saving it for? So I finally let it go. Okay. Um, what is minimalism? Minimalism, to me, it's um, it's making my home easy, easy to maintain, so that I can I can enjoy all the things that are really important to me. Because all the stuff was taking up so much time, and when we get rid of all the excess, then we can devote that time to the things that we really say are our priorities. I like that. I agree with that. And you are so right. I tell you, I have learned so much from watching your videos. I just love them. Okay, is it it? Is it valuable enough or do I use it enough to justify the space it takes up? Yes. Yes. I, have, I think everything in our home should add value to our life to some extent. And it can be pretty. We can enjoy it. We can have decorations and consider that valuable. But if it's just stuffed away somewhere, um, clutter is not benign. It doesn't just sit there under the surface and not have any effect. It does affect our emotions, our mental state, our like the whole mental inventory that we're keeping track of things or like feeling guilty because all mm -hmm. grandma gave that to me and I just don't treasure it the way that she did. Yep. And so, yes. Okay. And then um, Michelle at My Everyday Wife Life frequently shares decluttering videos. And one of the things she will often encourage viewers to do is one drawer at a time. And I heard you give that same advice. Just work on one drawer. Uh, why is this approach helpful? So uh, for those of us who struggle with clutter, that we're not, we're not naturally organized uh, like we tend to see everything all at once. So like everything is just out there and it's so hard to chunk it down because we think like, oh, I need to declutter. And we're just like, ah, like everywhere. Um, so if you just chunk it down to just one drawer or one cabinet, one cupboard, um, then we can do that one and then we can move on to another one. And it just helps us to chunk it down and break it down to manageable tasks. Okay. And then a couple times I've heard you refer to the 2021 Decluttering Challenge. What is it and how can we participate? Yes. So this is how I started my minimalist journey. Um, I found a decluttering challenge on a forum, like, you know, way back when forums were the thing. Mm -hmm. And um, and we were getting rid of 2008 things in 2008. And my husband was a graphic designer. So he made me this chart with 2008 little check boxes that, um, and I just kept track of what I was getting rid of. And it was motivating to me because I had so much stuff that 
you didn't really see it. When I get rid of boxes and bags and take them to the donation center, I wouldn't necessarily see the results. So, um, so just seeing it on a piece of paper, like, yes, I got rid of 2000 things this year. Like that was very motivating for me. So I participate in that. What's that? How can we participate in that? So I sent you a link. Um, you can get a free download um, and print it out for yourself and keep track. I do have a Facebook group. Um, we're at we're at forty thousand seven hundred members, I think, right now. So wow. it's very it's a very active Facebook group. There's so much so many wonderful people in there that are really supportive. And if you're struggling, that's a great place to, <laughs> it's just to connect and, and get help. So, um, oh, there, you put the link. I did, but I'm trying to, I clicked, where is, where did it go? <laughs> just underneath. Okay. Yeah. So if you click that link, it'll take you to the, the sign up page so you can, oh. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, you can you can sign up and get the free download and um and then I send out the link to the Facebook group as well if you want if you want to participate in that. And I did put that link in the description box of this video. So I've dropped it here in the chat so you guys can see it, but it is in the link of the description box. So I encourage you guys to click on the link. I, I think that's something I could stand to do. Um, because you know. So for 2021, then we're getting rid of 2000. 2021, yeah. Okay, all right, that sounds good. That sounds good. And um, is there anything else you wanna add? No, I just thank you for having me on here. It's been a lot of fun and I am i haven't been live on YouTube, so I'm glad to experience it with such a wonderful crowd of people. Yeah, they've been really active over here in the chat and I've tried to stay on task because I can get really chatty. And then if I get involved in the chat, then it's like it slows everything down. Yeah. So do you have a couple more minutes or do you have to jump off right now? No, I have time until everybody walks back through the door. So okay. you'll hear it. I told my husband an hour, so you'll hear it if they come home. <laughs> okay, so let me get that off the screen. And then there were a couple things that I thought people said. And I know you can see the chat, but. So um, one of the things that Penny said is that her family is more concerned about the food and not and the, not all the pretty stuff. So Penny, I'm going to take that to heart and I'm going to start to focus more on that aspect. And um, let's see. There was a couple. Someone suggested using a quarantine box and if you don't pull those items out, in a certain amount of time, you can go ahead and donate it. Yeah, that is um, helpful. Yeah. Oh, Mimsy's on. Hi, Mimsy. Let's see. Well, I think I've missed some of the questions and I can't find them all now. But I think um, I really appreciate your being on. This has been a good chat. This has really been great. Um, so Nefertiri said she sometimes struggles with embracing decor because it sometimes reminds her of clutter. Yeah. So there's all kinds of people. Some people prefer to have nothing on the walls and that makes them feel calm. So if that's where you're at, like just be you and don't, don't worry about what everybody else's expectations are. Mm -hmm. um, and some people like just a few select nice pictures that, that make them feel the way they want to feel. Mm -hmm. um, but don't feel pressured to do it. If you don't, if you don't like it, um, go ahead and live without it. And then when you find something that you really love, mm -hmm. feel free to put it up. Yeah. Sometimes we feel like we've got to fill up a space on a bare wall and we really don't have to. Now, Michelle says photos are hard for her. That's part of that sentimental clutter. Any suggestions for that? No, photos are hard for me too. I <laughs> I went through them. I got rid of all the duplicates. It was, um, it, I don't know, there was a lot of hard things, but it was one of the really hard things of just letting go of the duplicates. And I ended up keeping all the negatives because mm -hmm. that's how old I am. Um, so I, <laughs> I kept all the negatives. They fit into one photo box. 
So I got it down to just that. And then I did, I used to scrapbook. So I still have all those albums that I did. Um, but I got rid of the scrapbooking supplies and that was really hard. Um, and then like I had so many stickers and everything and my youngest was like two and he loved stickers and they were outdated cause they were like 20 years old. So like now all the new stickers for scrapbooking were so much cuter. And um, so I just let my son play with the stickers which was really hard to watch but it kept him quiet for like a good eight hours like if you went across the span of two weeks so it was it was a win but um, okay. um but I think it just being very honest with yourself and like okay well there these are duplicates um and these are like photos that I'm just not going to use mm -hmm. uh because like we keep all of them you know all the crappy ones and everything and get rid of those and just keep the select ones that, that look really good that you really want to keep. Okay. Uh, so Michelle, I hope that helps you there. And um, Kristen says sentimental items need to be done slowly. Yeah, you do need to take the time to think about them. Uh, let's see what else. I think, I think that's it. I think those are all... Unless, do you see one that I'm? No, there's, there's all, you guys are all awesome. They're wonderful comments here. Yeah. Oh, is there a recommended place to start? Kelly asks. And you did answer that question once, but she might've jumped on late. So where's your suggestion to start? So I like to start in the kitchen just because when we streamline that, then it makes the rest of the rest every of everything easier to do. Like, cause we we are like Denise said, we spend most of our time in the kitchen. So if we get that under control and streamline, then we can go and tackle the other areas. Um, and I would say to do like all the main living areas first, and then go for the storage areas and the sentimental items because we want our everyday life to be easy, and then we can go tackle those other things when when we have the time and energy to do it. Okay. And then um, this last one, and then we're going to let you go because I, I promised you an hour and it's been six minutes over. So I, could you just say she didn't want to get rid of things from her late grandmother, but she wouldn't want her to be stressed over those items. So let yourself off the hook. And I think that was one of the things you mentioned earlier. We talked about guilty clutter and, you know, the memories are what you want to keep. Absolutely. And I think, you know, if we think about it, we, th we think about it from that standpoint, um, they don't want to cause us stress. Like our family is not looking down and like, yep, I'm sure glad she kept all that crap in the attic because like, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, no, they, they would they would say, yeah, it, like enjoy your family, spend time, you know, with the people you love, like make that your focus because relationships are what's important, not the stuff. Right. And this is the last question. And then we're going to let you go. And I'll stick around, guys. But we have to let Rachel go. I don't want to, but we're going to have to honor <laughs> her agreement and let her go. So if you want to uh, tackle this last one. All right. So how do you handle kid clutter and Christmas and birthday gifts to your kids? So um, that's kind of huge. Um, kid clutter. I did an experiment with my younger kids where. Um, where we just boxed up all their stuff and we kept out a few, just a few, it was like under 20 things that they played with regularly. And we, and I approached it as an experiment, like, okay, guys, let's see what it's like to live as a minimalist. And we put all of it in the garage and, and they played great. Like they had fun, like their imagination just took off. They were having fun with, you know, boxes, sticks outside, like all kinds of things. The toys were not important. And at the end of the time period, I asked like, do you want anything back? And they, they asked for a couple of things. Like there was like a baby doll and, um, play silks. They had play silks and, and that was it. Like the rest just stayed in the garage. And I ended up trading it, um, they wanted scooters. So I said, okay, like I'll buy you scooters if I can get rid of those boxes in the garage, but you can't look in the boxes. And they're like, okay. 
<laughs> let's do that. So, so that's what we did. Um, and there's still a collection. We still have to go through every year because they're kids. People give stuff to us. It just comes in. I'm pretty sure it like reproduces in our house, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. so, um, so we just make it a habit of like every six months to a year, we'll go through and declutter. I found it easier to have limited, like either use the container method where like this is the amount of space that you have and everything needs to fit in this space. Or um, my older boys did really well with just 20 items. Like you could keep 20 personal items. And that didn't include like Lego sets and building blocks and things like that. But it was just the, the things that they wanted to keep and they would keep weird things like they'd keep a paper from Sunday school that I knew would get thrown away the next week or mm -hmm. um, you know action figures that they didn't really play with but they thought it was cool when they got it and mm -hmm. so I think you should just let your children get rid of whatever they're willing to get rid of um, because often we're more attached to their toys than they are. Mm -hmm. and, and so it, it's also important that they're involved in that process and they feel like they have control over it and they made that decision because then they're much more satisfied with it. Okay. So. Okay. Well, Rachel, I want to thank you again for joining us. I'm trying to find your link again where I put it in there. Um, we really appreciate your joining us tonight. This was so nice. Thank it, you so much, Denise. I'm so excited to be here with you. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun. And um, I just like the energy that we get when there's someone on other than me. I just didn't realize how synergistically it could be. So uh, ladies and gents, be sure to go and visit Rachel at Nourishing Minimalism. She's got a whole library of videos that I think you will absolutely love. They will certainly minister to your spirit in so many different stages of your decluttering journey. And the question for the day is, do you have an area of opportunity that you need to work on. Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear about it. And then on top of that, what was your aha moment? I have had several. And one of them was, it's okay to break up a set of dishes. I was just like, oh, break up a set of dishes? You know, but it's like, it's okay to break up a set of dishes. So there was, that was an aha moment for me. So what are your aha moments? Drop them in the chat or in the comment section. And Rachel, I'm going to let you go. You can click yourself out and I'll continue to talk to the group here for just a few more minutes. But thank okay. you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye. Gosh, guys, wasn't she amazing? Oh, my goodness. You guys have to be sure and go on and uh, click on her challenge. Michelle, what do you think, Marilyn? So let's see. Oh, there's Penny. She's talking to Rachel. Oh, she's saying goodbye. So Marilyn is saying closets. Now, Marilyn, your closet shouldn't be too bad. I mean, you just reorganized your space. Or did you do that thing that so many people do? They move the stuff in, in the boxes, and they plan to un unpack them later, and they set them in the garage or in the closet, and then they never get to them. Did you do that? Because um, my daughter moved... I think it was in March she moved and um, she said they were talking about some stuff that, you know, they were having the movers come out and they were going to be packing things up. And there was a few things they were saying, well, we'll just, you know, we won't uh, go through those by bo these boxes that they hadn't opened from their last move. They said, well, we won't open those now. We'll just check those out when we get to the new house. And the realtor overheard them talking and said, let me just step in here. I know it's none of my business, but, and he explained how so many people go through box don't go through boxes planning to go through them when they make their move and then they don't get through them and those boxes end up just sitting so did you do that because you know there's a lot of people do do that okay um so Kristen said her garage is passable she can do more my garage is now passable but I still do need to do more uh, Carol said her craft room is an area of opportunity. Okay. Uh, Mimsy, oh, thank you so much for coming. Now you're new to my show. So if are you one of uh, Rachel's viewers, thank you so much for coming over. I appreciate that. And um, this was a great chat. You guys had the chat 
just blowing up and I could not get engaged. I had to stay focused because I promised her we'd just be on for an hour and I kept her on for like six extra minutes. So sorry about that. But it was just so much fun. We could have talked to her for another hour. So um, there's just so many things you guys are talking about. So, okay, let's see. Christy, thanks us for doing this live. It was so much fun. You guys be sure and come back next week. I'm not sure if we're going to have a guest or not, but we always have lots of fun over here. And um, for those of you that don't know, Vamsey is our little sister. She's our little high school student that jumps on with us every week. She's learning lots of stuff from all of our homemakers. So it's always nice to have her with us. Uh, Khadija said great chat and it was a good chat. I so enjoyed it and uh, see table for nine, which I think her name is Amy and thus I'm wrong. She's they're working on the basement and oh, so Darcy said she's been watching Rachel for a while. I met Rachel in a decluttering challenge with the minimal mom. That's when I first came across her and I love her. Oh, thank you, Mimsy. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else. Yolanda, table for nine is Yolanda. And I've been calling you Amy all night. Sorry about that. And Mary, thank you so much. This was really a, a fun one. And last week we had Darcy and Khadija. That was a lot of fun. And then uh, today we had Rachel. So we'll see whether or not I'm able to get the guest that I've been working on for next week. So let me invite you guys to be sure and check out my last video that dropped on Tuesday, my great garage cleanup day one. We did talk about a large overwhelming project here on the show and I finally got those videos, the editing started. And so video one is up and then my um, large project worksheet is in the description box and it's in the description box for that video as well. I popped it in that video late, but it's in there now. And be sure and check out our sponsor, Apron Diva. Pretty and practical. And apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. So be sure and check that out. And let's see. And in the meantime, this is Denise Jordan saying you are not done yet. Click on the link in the comment section below and check out another of my homemaking stories. And I will see you next time. So goodbye, ladies and gents. I think we have pretty much covered it. Thank you guys so much. And I appreciate the time you um, took joining us tonight. So, oh, and also we're going to be doing Christmas in July here on This and That with Denise Jordan. We're probably going to be posting videos on Saturdays associated with Christmas in July. I don't think we're going to start this Saturday, probably next Saturday for three Saturdays leading up to July 25th. We'll do a Christmas in July, July something. So please be sure and stop back for that. Hey, Cal, good to have you with us. And so goodbye. I missed you earlier. And um, good night, everybody. Mimsy, this was fun. Be sure and come back next week. Good night, everyone.